my soul so weary when troubles come and my heart burdened be then I am still and wait here in the silence until you come and sit a while desire to the work of thy hands. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, from even everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. As for man, 
his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourisheth. For the wind passeth over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto children's children, to such as keep his covenant and to those that remember his commandments to do them. Let me say a pleasant good morning to all. And uh, welcome to this, our church at Knock Patrick. We are uh, grieving with the family and with you. But we just want you to take heart as we go through this service. We will begin our service with the singing of the hymn as is on our program number 86, How Great Thou Art. before you this morning. For some is a sad occasion. For others it may not be so sad. But you know it's every situation and we know that you are in control. So this morning we pray that you will be very near and dear especially to the grieving family, friends and other well-wishers. And we pray thee that whatsoever is done and said today that all will be to your name's honor and glory. Take charge of this service, and may at the end of it, may we be closer drawn to you with the realization that we too, one day, if you tarry, will have to pass this way. So have your own way now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
before we begin, on behalf of the pastors, pastor, Pastor Lincoln Lykin, elders, and the members of this church, we just want to again just openly extend our condolences to the family. I'm a part of the family too, so it is for me. So we are grieving together and we hope the good Lord will see us through. So to begin our program, we will have the program running as per the printed program. And we will have our first lesson, which will be St. John 14, 1, 2, 3, which will be read by Alia Francis. And you can, I'll just, a no, minute, Alia. And um, that will be followed by the selection by Yaya Gale, then the second lesson, and then it will flow in that order. And persons who are participating, just stay close to the front so to avoid that lapse in time. So when you look on your next, you should be just close enough to just take your turn next. So we, Alia Francis. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. The scripture reading will be taken from St. John 14, verse 1 to 2, verse 1 to 3. Let not your heart be troubled. He believed in God, believe also in me. In my father's house. There are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And, you, and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there he may be also. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good evening. Yes. <laughs> or even afternoon. Then, all right. I'm, good morning. I'm just singing this song because when I went to my granny, she always asked me. When I was singing sometime and I mean, she always sent me to sing, so I'm just singing it. No, I'm kind of singing about me. I try. It go like, early this morning. Woke from my sleep, I heard his voice spoke softly to me. He said, My child, you've spent some lonely nights, that's why I'm here to comfort you if you only believe when I committed my life to him I know that he is care for me Committed my life to him because I know he cares, he will always be there. That's why I'm committed. It was in the dark, Christ revealed himself to me. He said, my child, I am your destiny, lonely nights I spent in agony, 
as I pray separately and I started to cry. I am committed. Oh, I am committed. My life, my life, my life to Christ. Cause I know he cares. He will always be there. That's why I'm committed. When trials come and it seems so hard to bear, yes, Jesus knows what you're going through. Your circumstances, God will fix them for you. Cause he take your hands and he lead you up. You always be strong when I'm committed. My life, my life, my life to Christ. Cause I know God cares. He will always be there. That's why I'm committed. I know he cares. He will always be there. That's why I'm committed. Big up granny. All the way. Rest in peace. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. The second lesson is taken from Revelation 20, verse 1 to 4, and it reads, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bowed him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loose and little season for and last and i saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them and i saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God and which had not whispered, not worshipped, sorry, the beast, neither his image, neither and received his mark upon their foreheads, are in their hands and lived and gained with Christ a thousand years. Here and in here and in a portion of God's holy word we honor by saying thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. All right, we will now go straight into our tributes. And we're asking that the tributes be as brief as possible. We say three minutes. And we don't want us to use two minutes for talking and then three for singing. So three minutes in total. All right, so we will have Mr. Delroy Brown Jr. followed by Lorraine Robinson and David Robinson and then we will have a floral tribute thereafter. We will follow in that order. Good morning everyone. Good morning. Today we gather to celebrate the remarkable life of my beloved grandmother, Lucille Hewitt more affectionately called by her grandchildren, Granny. To me, she was more than just a grandmother. She was a friend, a mentor, a source of unending love and wisdom. Many of us may remember Granny's love for sport, 
She was mad about sport, wasn't she? Whether it was football, cricket, we would watch cricket at night, watch recaps of West Indies T20 match. She was mad in love with Chris Gale because he could hit the ball very well. She was in love with any kind of sport. It could even be wrestling. She would be right there front and center cheering on the team that she wants to win. And let's not forget her dying love for a Western cowboy movies, in it. She would spend hours watching her telly, lost in those tales of the Wild West with their rugged heroes and vast open landscapes. Something about that just resonated deeply with her. Growing up, I would spend my holidays, mostly the summers, here in the country. And three things was mandatory for me coming to the country. You know, I had to bring Granny's fried fish. Also, her money to buy her ice cream because she's, she loves her ice cream. And also, I had to have good ma manners because Granny was a very disciplined woman. But also, caring, just like my Auntie Pauline. She also ensured that I was well fed. She kept tabs on my daily activities during my holidays to make sure everything was going smoothly. And I'm very thankful for that. Now, as we bid farewell to Lucille Hewitt, let us carry forward her legacy of love, laughter, and resilience. Though she may no longer be with us in body, her spirit will continue to bloom in our hearts, reminding us of her beauty and joy of life. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Dave Robinson, and this is my sister, Lorraine Robinson. We would like to share some memories in tribute of our beloved Auntie Waller. The Robinson family's connection to Auntie began in the early 1960s when our parents left Jamaica to settle in England. At that time, it was common for young Jamaican arrivals to share what were often cramped and run-down rented houses with other Jamaicans with whom they previously bore no relation. In these difficult conditions, Jamaicans often formed new friendships, many of which became as strong as family bonds. It was in this way that our father from St Elizabeth and our mother from Trelawney first met Lucille Hewitt and Clifford Waller. Our family's, close relationship, our, our family's close friendship develops quickly, and when Lucille and, and Clifford married soon after, my mother served as auntie's maid of honour. However, following the birth of our parents, my parents' fourth child in February 1965, which was my sister Lorraine, my parents' single room accommodation became overcrowded. Fortunately, they had worked and saved hard enough to buy, to buy a home nearby. For a time, our parents and three of their four children were joined in the new home by Uncle and Auntie Walla and Eric. Together, the two sets of parents grew their four children as family, and many of our family's early photographs in England captured us all living and socialising side by side. Little after that, the Wallers left our parents' home to settle in a home of their own. But fortunately, Auntie and Uncle didn't move far, and both parents and children remained in constant a constant presence in each other's lives. Auntie Waller, Eric and Ian were regular visitors to our parents' home, and whilst the children played, Auntie would spend many hours in deep conversation with my mum and dad. As youngsters, there were times when Lorraine and I would compete for our parents' permission to spend a day, or better still, the weekend at Auntie Wallace. For Lorraine, it was the opportunity to plait Auntie's hair, 
be spoilt eating chocolates as they watch TV together and to look on as Auntie made her flavoursome macaroni cheese with, her, with its brown bottom and delicious crusty, crusty top. And on Sundays, there was always the opportunity to enjoy Auntie's wonderful stew chicken and rice and peas and to get a slice of her freshly baked cakes as soon as they cooled from the oven. My visits, on the other hand, were spent ramping with Auntie's youngest son, Ian. The two of us would bother Eric when he was there or sneak into his room to play with his things when he wasn't. Ian and I always knew that if Eric caught us, he would tump us up with those big hands of his. But the danger of being caught just added to the excitement. I too loved Auntie's freshly baked cakes and there were times when I would follow Ian into the kitchen to tea for slice even before they had had a chance to call down from the oven. Sadly for us in England, our regular visits to aunties were not to last. Lorraine recalls the day in 1989 when she and her daughter Lenol, who is also here today, visited Auntie Wallace to be told that she would soon be returning home to Jamaica. And so it was that Auntie said goodbye to England and returned home. Her son Ian had always been the more regular visitor to our parents' home, but after his passing in 1999, Eric's visits to my parents' home became more regular and up to now it's still unclear whether my parents adopted Eric or he adopted my parents. <laughs> Either way, the bonds between our families endured and our parents kept in touch through phone calls. I last saw Auntie in 2020 when I visited her home during a stay in Kingston. But Lorraine would visit more often and while she was here, was here would once again plait Auntie's hair, talk with her about Wagwan in England and the area where she last lived, Collier's Wood. So on behalf of the Robinson family, and those in England who were unable to make it here to pay their final respects today, rest in power, Antiwala. We love you and miss you and will forever hold you in our hearts. Thank you. Thank you. Services Department. But I'd like to let you know that 
especially since the passage of hurricane burial, the needs in our communities are great. And so this offering will go to assist our community needs as we see them day after day. And so before the deacons and the ushers wait on us for this, tight, this uh, offering, special offering, I'm going to invite you to stand with me as we ask God's special blessing. Kindly stand as we pray. Our loving Father, who art in heaven, we thank you for your constant watch care over us. Thank you that you're a God who seeks to take care of the needs of your children. And so even in this service today, as we now lift this Thanksgiving offering, this offering to aid in community services, we pray, oh God, that you will bless it. Bless all your children who will contribute to this need and may it go to the needs, to satisfy the needs of these community members who so very much need our help. Thank you, Lord, for blessing this offering, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. During the offering, we will sing the hymn, The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. And we will sing it to the tune of the happy wanderer. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me down to life. In pastures green, he leadeth me. The quiet waters by. He lives, he lives, he lives. I know that the Redeemer lives, he lives.
Okay, man, now we know that Jesus lives within our heart. And if he's not living within your heart, please open your heart's door and allow him to come in and take residence there. We will now transition in our program and this segment will be the form of a remembrance will be, which will be done by Pamela Campbell and those we have a slot for two open tributes so we're asking persons who wish to do either of those tributes two persons please make yourself ready so we'll take those two open tributes after Pamela with the remembrance <coughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Remembrance for the life of Miss Lucille Hewitt. Today we gathered not to mourn, but to celebrate the life of a truly remarkable woman, Miss Lucille Hewitt. If you knew Miss Lucille, you knew she had a knack for finding joy in the simplest things. Whether it was a string of twinkling Christmas lights the smell of fresh baked cake, or the satisfaction of pulling the last weed from her flower bed. She embraced life with a sparkle in her eye, and the smile could warm the coldest winter night. Miss Lucille had a love affair with Christmas that was not in short of legacy. Her house would glow like a beacon or festive chair from miles away. Thanks for her obsession with paper lights. She didn't just hang them. She draped, wrapped, and meticulously placed every single bulb under her home, looked like a scene from a Hallmark movie. For her, Christmas wasn't just a season. It was a state of mind, a time when her love for family, friends, and the simple joy of life was on full display. She could make even the cringiest among us feel the warm of holidays. And when there were a kitchen, a place that would rival Santa's workshop in terms of output, Miss Lucille Cake were the stuff of a legend, moist, rich, and always baked with love. Her soup, well, they were like a warm hug on a cold day each pot simmering with the flavor of home. She had a special knack for knowing just what everyone needed, a slice of cake to celebrate a victory, or a bowl of soup to smooth the soul. Her food was an extension of her heart, nourishing both body and spirit. <clears throat> Miss Lucy love for a garden was another one of her many passions. She has a way with flowers that can only be described as magical. Up before the sun, she'd be out in her garden, hands in the soil, nurturing her plants with the same care and attention she gave to everyone in life. Weeding her flower bed was just the chore. It was her quiet time for a moment to connect with the earth and reflect on life. In her garden, we see the essence of who was patient, nurturing, and ever so resilient. But beyond her love for Christmas, her baking, and her garden, Miss Lucille was a woman who knew the value of hard work and dedication. She lived her life, she tended her garden putting in the effort, weathering the storm, and always taking the time to appreciate the beauty that bloomed as a result. Her life was a testament to the idea that if you care for something, whether it's a garden, a family, or a community, it is well flourished. So today we remember her, Miss Lucille. Let not be sad that she is no longer with us. Let's be grateful for the life she brought into our lives, the warmth of her laughter, the sweetness of her love. Let's remember her when we see a string of Christmas lights twinkling in the night, when we smell a cake fresh out of the oven, 
or when we put up early and feel the cool morning air on our faces. Miss Lucy Lewis was a woman who made the world around her a little brighter, a little warmer, and a whole lot more joyful. And for that, we will always remember her with love and gratitude. Rest in peace, Miss Lucy. Life perpetual shine. Thank you. <clears throat> On. All right, now is a time that most persons anticipate at a funeral to get a, well, we got a sneak peek into remembering her, what she was like, and her activities. But in terms of, you know, her biography, her antecedent before death, we will now hear from Darren Campbell in the form of the eulogy, where we will better get to know more about Miss Lucille. Hello, everyone. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Lovely. No. Pardon? No, man, it's fine as it is, man. I'm good. So, start by saying good day, everyone. Uh, as you can see, I'm quite happy today, right? I know it sounds a little weird to say you're happy at a funeral, but I'm happy because my aunt has lived a very long, happy, and fruitful life. So, it's, I'm very happy that I was able to be a part of her long journey. So today isn't a sad one, but before I begin, I know a person saw me walking up with this and maybe thinking, what the, well, I can't say that word in church. But the person's Bible wondering, what is this, right? I'll explain it, Pastor, I promise you it's not witchcraft, you hear? It's just a talk, right? But I'll explain it momentarily. So today isn't a sad one, it's a happy one. Happy because my aunt lived a very beautiful life spanned over many years, right? But as with anything that is beautiful, even the prettiest and sweetest lily, it ages, gets old, and it eventually dies. Lucille Hewitt, well, Lucille Wilhelmina Hewitt Nee Walla, right? Very weird name for a very special lady. Started her very long journey on the 22nd of August, 1930, in North Patrick, Manchester. Her parents, Jonathan Hewitt and Beatrice Hewitt, welcomed into this earth a beautiful baby girl, which they nurtured for many years and gave us an amazing woman. That I oftentimes call Miss Walla, Auntie Lucille, and, and, and some other things I can't really say here, but, but, but let's proceed. Auntie Lucille acquired her early education at the Albion School. Now here's a little joke. On my many visits to her, she oftentimes said to me that she disliked school. She never liked it, right? But as she aged, she said to me that she despised her hate for school because she could have accomplished way more at life if she had liked school. At an early age, Auntie Lucille I concluded that she desired better opportunities for herself, which saw her migrate into Kingston. Uh, you know, back in those days, they used to refer to it as a land of opportunities. Now, they refer to it as, as other things. While in Kingston, she earned her honest earning by being a domestic helper. My aunt, being a woman that didn't believe in settling, as she always sought more for herself, with the intention of being better at a concept called life, she eventually grabbed at an opportunity by the neck, as she would say, grabbed opportunities by the neck, and she migrated to England. While in England, she worked in a factory making handbags. Now, you know, a lot of us in here know her. I personally have never seen her wearing a handbag. Have you went to Pauline? Seen it? I've never seen it. Never seen it, right? While residing in England, she lived a very productive, 
and very happy life. And uh, you'd have known this if you'd have interacted with her. Her many stories were about her days back in England, uh, you know, having fun. Years would have passed, and uh, Auntie Lucy would have had a desire to return home to Jamaica. And uh, as us Jamaicans would say, no is better than yard. So as she began to age, she had a desire to return home, and she eventually did. After returning to Jamaica, Aunt Lucille took pride in assisting with growing her grandchildren, great-grandchildren. And uh, one is seated right here, uh, Samantha, whom I, 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 I took pride in giving lots of trouble in the yard when we were much younger. We'd run around, create lots of mischief, take Auntie Pauline's sweets when she went on the road. Right, Auntie Pauline? Right. After, so, for, sorry. As it is the case with the prettiest Lily, Aunt Lucille started the aging process, which led to her being ill over a period of years. I vividly remember when we were told that she would have to lose a leg. She said to me that, tell the doctor if you take off the leg so I can live like a young guy, man. She was very warm about the concept. Many persons would have lost a limb and would have become uh, pessimistic towards life. She embraced it, she hugged it up, and, and, and she loved the concept that if something was able to be removed from her and that would provide her a little longer to live, she would uh, embrace it. While being one of the strongest persons I have personally known, her strength faded to zero on June 22nd at approximately 1 p.m. at the Mandeville Regional Hospital. Auntie Lucille leaves behind a mountain of legacy. Her family, through her family, sorry, she was an aunt, a grandmother, a great-grandmother, a great-great-grandmother. A very productive family, you might say, huh? Now, the other day, Mr. Holness said that the, the Jamaican birth rate is decreasing. Uh, well, you can't blame Auntie Lucille for that. She was very fruitful, and her children were very fruitful, and their children are quite fruitful right now. So you can't blame us, Mr. Prime Minister. Blame her family. Now, of all her previous titles, grandmother, great-grandmother, one that I personally know that she cherished the most was being called a mother. With that being said, she, left, she has left behind three children who are, who are still with us. She had more, two are deceased. Uh, she has children remaining, Pauline, Auntie Pauline, Delroy, and Eric. Her family tree spans 21 grandchildren. See, very fruitful. 30 great-grandchildren, 10 great-great-great-grand. Yeah, that, that's right, okay. She has one brother remaining, Tony, my father, three nephews, of which I am one of, and other relatives and friend. Now, let me tell you a little story about this, right? So I've had this since, I'm gonna say age four, five, and uh, talk your ears faster, and other gentlemen. So I, I technically stole this from her house, right? On my many visits to her house, I would st and talk your ears faster. I would steal a toy, right? And when upon my next visit, she would say, "By chance, you did see the dinosaur with the hair, so by chance, you did see that." And I said, "No, until Lucille." Many years ago, probably 10 years ago, I started bringing back the toys to her one one, which brought back memories to her. And she said, oh, so are you to take them after all? And I would say, well, well yes, technically I borrowed them. Told her it was my, my little piece of, of the legacy that I was taking, right? This is very precious to me. Uh, I have some cousins, you might realize that the dinosaur now has painted on the nails. I have a little cousin that would visit the house and would paint them. You know, I've had a few nice words with her. But uh, very, 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 very precious to me. It's unfortunate the only piece of memory that I, a tangible piece of memory that I now have to remind myself of my aunt, right? So, not witchcraft, Pastor. That's a toy. That's a memorabilia. <laughs> my aunt, rest well. Your guidance and conversations over the past years will surely be missed. But what I personally will miss the most is visiting her, you know, giving her little jokes, little stories, and uh, you would hear her laugh to the point where she would cough. And she said, Pauline, make a little water now, please. Right? She would laugh to the point where she would choke. Right? So that's what I personally will miss the most. 
But what I've cherished the most about our experience is how she was able to translate her own life experience and provide me with some wisdom, some guidance, um, which may have made me the creature I am today. Now, bye-bye until the cell. Until we meet again, we will cherish your memories, we'll cherish your lessons, we'll cherish you until we meet again. Thank you. Thank you, Pamela and Darren, for giving us sneak preview into the life of Auntie Lucille. Some of you are here and, you know, wondering what was Auntie Lucy like again? But here we got a vivid reminder of what she was like and her life as she lived it. And now we will be going into the Word. And the most important part, I may say, of a funeral service is the Word, the reminder to us of the uh, transient nature of life and that this path we trod only once and uh, to do so today to remind us of the love of Christ and uh, the need that we have as human beings to experience a relationship with him we have our pastor pastor Lincoln Lichen and for those of you who are not from the country area who don't know about Pastor Lichen, if you listen to your radio NCU FM on a Friday half evening, you will hear him on the Sunset Serenade. A very compassionate pastor of the word, one who is very, he researches the word very deep and he loves to share the word because one of his passions is to see all men, women, boy and girl come into a saving relationship with Christ. So we just want you to sit back, relax, listen, open your hearts and allow the Holy Spirit to plant that seed as Pastor Lincoln Lichen comes to give us a reminder through the word. But before we have Pastor Lichen, we'll have Sister Anne-Marie and Sister Lisa who will give us a meditation in song. Uh, good afternoon again, everybody. I just want to say condolences to the Hewitt's family. I might not have known everybody, but we, some of us live close by, right? But to remind us that um, funeral services are not for the dead. It's about them, but it's for us who are alive and can hear the Spirit of God to make it right with him before it is too late. All right? So I hope the words of this song will be a blessing to your hearts.
as one who has been walking with the Lord for most of my life. I know exactly how that feels. As a Christian, you know, sometimes I don't think we are honest with the people. To be a Christian is not easy. To be a follower of Jesus gets very difficult. But we've come too far to look back. Hallelujah. Praise him. Thank you so much, Sister Anne-Marie and Sister Lisa. God bless you. Thank you for blessing us with the gift that the Lord has given you. And good afternoon, brothers and sisters. I know that it is easy to ask the question, how are you doing? But I see the casket in front of you, in front of us. And so I know that it is indeed a difficult, difficult day. I also extend my condolences to the Hewitt family. I know that it is not easy, but I also know that God is able. So I leave you in his capable hands this afternoon. I also want to take this opportunity to welcome those who are visiting us here at the Knock Patrick Seventh-day Adventist Church for the first time. And I always say it is unfortunate that the first time we are meeting is in a situation such as this where there is so much mourning and grief. But as pastor of the church, I extend an invitation to you to join us here on Sabbath evening, our Sabbaths, and on Sunday evenings, and on Wednesday evenings for praise and prayer, because we still believe that God can make a difference in this community. Amen? We still believe that God can make a difference in your life. And so I extend an invitation to you to come, let us pray with you, let us worship God together, and let him transform your life. I notice that the service is going along pretty briskly, and I do not want to take too much time sharing the word this afternoon, and so I will go into my message which comes to us from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 20 to 26. That is 1 Corinthians 15, verses 20 to 26. And it reads, But now Christ is risen from the dead, and has become the firstfruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. But each one in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward those who are Christ's at his coming. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. The title of the message this afternoon is The Last Enemy. The Last Enemy. Let us pray. Heavenly Father. We thank you so much for your goodness, Lord, especially in times of grief. And so often, Lord, the enemy comes and covers our hearts with darkness. He reminds us of the pain that is in the world and the loss we feel when we bury a loved one. But even in the midst of this darkness, there is light. And Heavenly Father, I pray that your light will shine abroad in the hearts of those who hear my voice this afternoon. And may that light shine even until eternity. May your Holy Spirit fill this unworthy vessel. Speak to your people and bless them now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen and amen. 
one of the things I have come to realize is that as Jamaicans, there are many things in this life that we get used to. Not true. Many things in this life we get used to. We get used to bad roads. <laughs> we get used to small pay. Uh, we get used to political corruption. And unfortunately, we get used to crime. Used to. One of those things is paying taxes. No matter how much time you get your pay and you looked at your, uh, your salary and you see the deductions, you never get used to it. We never get used to GCT and how it hikes up the prices of the goods that we have to purchase. We never get used to taxes. Uh, one of the things that we also never get used to is being betrayed. It doesn't matter how many times it has happened to us, but when someone we care about betrays us, it always leaves a scar on our soul. And the one thing this morning that is facing us all that we never get used to is death. No matter how many times we put a loved one in the ground, no matter how many times we come to church and the casket is before us, we never get used to death. Men have tried to make peace with death, saying that death is the doorway to another world and, and when you die, you go off to another place. But, but the Bible does not say death is a doorway. The Bible says death is an enemy. It was a famous Chinese philosopher, Shang Tzu, that said, if you know your enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the results of a hundred battles. But he adds, if you know yourself, but not the enemy, for every victory gained, you will also suffer a defeat. So brothers and sisters, it is important for us to understand ourselves. It's important for us to understand this last enemy called death. In Jamaica land we love, and even across the world, if you watch Hollywood uh, and other sources of entertainment, you recognize that there are many false misconceptions or many misconceptions about death to help us to grapple with this last enemy, to understand this enemy that humanity has to deal with. And the first thing that he teaches us is that death is asleep. In 1 Corinthians 15 verse 20, he says, But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who what? Have fallen asleep. Death is not a transition to heaven or a transition to a better life. Death is asleep. There are 54 times in scripture where death is referred to as asleep. In Job 14 verse 12, Job says, They shall not awake, speaking of the dead, nor be raised out of their sleep. In Psalm 13, verse 3, it says, Consider and answer me, O Lord my God, enlighten my eyes, or I will sleep the sleep of death. In Matthew 9, 24, our Lord Jesus Christ said, Leave, for the girl has not died, but is what? Asleep. It is the reality of scripture from Genesis to Revelation that death is asleep. Death is not something that leads to heaven or to hell. There aren't people who have died and gone to heaven now or people who have died and in hell roasting. Death is asleep. The other thing that the apostle seeks to explain in this passage is that believe it or not, whether you're young or you're old, we are all marked for death. 
In 1 Corinthians 15, 21, it says, For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the death. Romans 5, verse 12 says, Wherefore by one man sin entered the world, and death by sin, and so death passed to all men, for all have sinned. Death is Adam's legacy to mankind. Death is something that has passed on to us that we did not want. All of us want a legacy. We want to receive blessings from those who came before us. But all Adam could pass to humanity is death. You know, I like to clear up this point because so often I hear conversations. You know, you pass and you hear people talking on the street and they're saying, Oh, because a woman, why this? And, and it's a woman eat from the tree. And it's because of a woman, why death come to, to, to humanity. But the Bible makes it clear that death is Adam's legacy. It was not the woman's disobedience that brought death to mankind. It was the man. And the reason I like to emphasize this is to let the men understand that you have great spiritual responsibility. God has created you to be men, to be leaders in your families, leaders in your communities, leaders on this planet. We cannot afford to fail our women. But even more so, brothers, we cannot afford to fail our God. Adam failed his God. He ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And as such, death has passed to all men. Whether you're young or you're old or middle-aged, it doesn't matter. Death will claim you when you least expect it. Death doesn't care if you're in the crib. He will claim you. Death is... An enemy. The next thing the apostle wants us to understand is that the dead will not rise again until Jesus returns. In 1 Corinthians 15 verse 22 to 23 it says, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. But each one in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterwards those who are Christ at his coming, brothers and sisters, nobody is in heaven now, nobody is in hell now, not until Jesus comes. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 16 to 17 says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we who are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet him in the clouds, brothers and sisters. There's many misconceptions falling on our ears today. Telling us that the people we love are burning in hell somewhere. They tell us that when you die, you, you go and if you're not saved, you are cast into the lake of fire. That's not what the Bible says. The dead in Christ will be raised. If you have lost someone that you love, you will see them again. But notice, brothers and sisters, a key part of the text, it says the dead in Christ. And the question we all have to ask ourselves, are we in Christ? Are we in Christ? We are all claim to be Christians and yes, we believe in God. But is your faith in Jesus? Mark 16 verse 16 says, Whosoever believeth and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. Our only safety, brothers and sisters, from this last enemy is Jesus Christ. Our 
only safety from this enemy that has defeated every opponent but one is Jesus many of you are sitting here know people who are called by the name of Christ and this isn't even in my sermon but the spirit says I should say this you know people who claim to be Christian but when you look at their lives when you look at how they live when you look at how they speak you do not see Christ and it turn you off why like follow the God that you serve when you are following him yourself that's the question we ask but brothers and sisters you can't watch the people around Jesus you can't watch the people who claim they follow Jesus one of my favorite stories in scripture is a story about a woman with the issue of blood there was a crowd around Jesus touching him as he went along and she reached out in faith and touched the hem of his garment and Jesus turned around and said who touched me and disciples looked at him as if he was crazy and said Jesus look at all these people who are touching you all these people who are around you but he said somebody touch me with a touch of faith it doesn't matter how many people are claiming to be Christian it doesn't matter how many people are thronged in the church and thronged around Jesus if you touch him by faith he will save you Jesus is looking for people to save some of us claim to be Christians but our lives say something completely different and there's always good news even in the midst of darkness and pain there's always good news and the Bible says then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, when he has put an end to all rule and all authority, the last enemy that will be destroyed is death. And brothers and sisters, death will be destroyed. That which claimed Sister Hewitt will be destroyed. That which have claimed your fathers and mothers and uncles and cousins and children will be destroyed. No more weeping. No more wailing. No more funerals. No more gravesides. Death will be no more. In Revelation 20 verse 14 it says and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Death will die. Brothers and sisters. Death will die. There is no bones about that. No matter how much we see raining. No matter how many people death is claiming. Death will die. The only question we have to ask is whether or not we will die with it. That's the only question that we have. That is a question each one of us will have to ask ourselves. We have to look in the mirror and ask ourselves, will death claim us too? Will we be a part of the second death? And that's the question I leave with you this afternoon. But my prayer, brothers and sisters, is that we will all give our heart to Jesus Christ and find the salvation that only he can give because ultimately only he can destroy the last enemy that is death. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Let's really look forward to that day when death 
will be no more. At this time, we will have prayer for the family. I'll ask those family members to remain seated and all others, friends, and well wishers, I invite you to stand with me as we present the family members to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to our God in prayer. Great God and our loving Heavenly Father. Our Redeemer, our Sustainer. Our sympathizing Jesus, the compassionate one, we come to you this afternoon, dear Lord. We come to you because there is a family in grief. We have lost a loved one. But, oh Lord, we recognize that you are the great comforter. And it doesn't matter the comfort that our human friends and relatives may give. We cannot give the comfort that you, Lord, can give. And so we ask you this afternoon, O oh Lord, to extend your hand of mercy and compassion. Surround these family members with your love. Help them to feel your presence near them. Help them, O oh God, to understand that you are the God who cares. You are the one who is interested in their ever well-being. You are the one who sees the tears that fall from their eyes. You are the one who feels, sees the pain in the heart of each one, and you care. So we ask you, Father, to have mercy, have compassion, extend to them your hand of mercy. Fold them in your arms, cover them under your wings, O God, as the hen covers her chicks. Keep them warm in your love. Keep them trusting you and recognizing that without you, they cannot survive. Oh Lord, the loved one has gone on. But we thank you, Lord, that, that death is not the end. You promise in your words that you will come again and those who sleep in Jesus will come back to a life that will know no end. We ask you, oh Father, that you will help each family member here today, that they will make that all-important commitment with you to surrender their lives totally to you, so that on that great getting up morning, if their loved one was gone on before is faithful when she rises, they will be privileged to see her, to live with her, to enjoy sweet fellowship. And it won't be for time, but it will be for all eternity. So into your hands we place them. Provide for their needs. Keep them safe. Keep them comforted. Help them, O oh God, that they will live recognizing that there is coming a day when by your grace, if their time shall last, that they will be where their loved one lies today. Help them to ponder in their heart, is it well with my soul? Is it well, is it well with their soul? And help them this afternoon to ponder these words in their hearts. And if it is not well, help them that they will make amends before it is eternally too late. Thank you, Lord, for being here with us too in this service. And as we prepare to leave here, we pray, O oh God, that you will go before. 
as we go to lay the loved one to rest. Father, grant guidance, grant protection, but above all, keep each one faithful and true to you, so that by your grace, when you come to claim their own, each one will be privileged to hear from your lips, the blessed well done, enter thou into the joys of thy Lord. May this be the experience of the all family members, of all well-wishers, of all friends here today, of all of us, is our prayer with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We have come to this, the end of this segment of today's program and this is the segment in the church i must congratulate you all you have been a very well behaved mannerly audience and we just want to tell you thanks for being such so now we will make the transition from here transition from here to the internment plot and that will be at the Melrose Cemetery. Uh, Melrose? Yeah, the Melrose Cemetery. So we will be asking that the pallbearers during the singing of the recessional hymn. Cemetery. So we will proceed in that order as we go. So shall we? Stand as we sing when we all get
We'll see what is coming, we'll see what is coming, yeah. As we continue this Thanksgiving service for the life of Sister Lucille Hewitt, we will begin this committal service with a scripture reading and a prayer by Elder Lenny Hewitt. All right, our passage of scripture is from Revelation chapter 1, verses 17 and 18, and it reads thus, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. Verse 18 and last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Let us pray, Heavenly Father. We are here to lay the final remains of our loved one to rest. We pray thee now that you will take charge of this part of the service. And may we acknowledge that you are God and you have the keys of death and hell. So help us, O oh God, to put our trust in you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 For as much as God in his goodness and the outworking of his providence has permitted this, our friend, the seal Hewitt, to lay down the burdens of this life, we do lovingly commit her body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Remembering as we do that all issues of life are in the hands of the everlasting Father of love and compassion. And that he has promised eternal life to those who love him. Doing their thing. Let us let us start it. We have a hymn on our program. By the grace of it will dwell my soul and then we'll go into some choruses. One singer can start for us, please. When peace like a river. Nobody no singer here? <laughs>